Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivers. Uh, I'm the Carb Addiction Doc. And before we get into today's uh, video, I just want to say thank you so much to folks that throw us a few dollars at our Patreon account and especially at our PayPal account. The addresses are in the show notes below, but that keeps this channel free. You can help us by subscribing to this channel and by liking the videos or even leaving a comment. And if you see some of our videos popping up on your feed, click on it for a few seconds. Thanks so much. And now to today's video. Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today in our series of carnivore diets, we're going to talk about the most concerning, most controversial part about a carnivore diet, at least as it pertains to the, the skeptics and the naysayers out there. And that is lipid profile. Rise in LDL and the correlation between LDL in the minds of those people with cardiovascular disease. So we're going to break this down because this is the most controversial one. And I want to give you a way to understand how your lipids work in your body and maximize the benefit without the liability. So the first thing is that LDL will rise. Your LDL level is supposed to rise on a carnivore diet. But the key thing is this. If the big, fluffy, healthy LDL rises, that is what's supposed to happen on a carnivore diet. And if you look at your LDL molecules, you get an NMR on it, which I'm not a big fan of, but you can count the big, fluffy numbers, high numbers, but big and fluffy and full of fat. That is the healthiest pattern A LDL, which is the healthiest for you, not the unhealthiest. And we can measure that size. But here's how, how this occurs. And yes, you can't overdo things like anything. So when we look at lipid trafficking in the human body, when you are on a carnivore diet and you're eating a decent amount of fat, the first thing that happens with fat in the human gut is fat gets broken down into essential fatty acids, long chain fatty acids when you're eating fat from animals. And the majority of that fat doesn't like water. So very little of that fat goes directly to the liver. The ketones, the short chain fatty acids and the medium chain fatty acids will go because they're, they can dissolve in an aqueous medium, will go to the liver for processing and storage. And we'll talk about that in a second. The majority of fat that we eat gets broken down to fatty acids and together with bile form these little soapy bubbles called biomicelles and chylomicrons that come down from the liver, get reformatted and go in the lymphatic system of the uh, gut, not the bloodstream. So you can't really measure this, but you can see it. If you operate on somebody that's just had a big fatty meal, you'll see this white milky substance that is the fat, goes in the lacteals, goes in the chyle and goes directly to the bloodstream, dumps out in the um, thoracic duct into the veins um, of the body. So it's in the venous system, bypasses the liver, um, where the thoracic duct enters the neck on the left neck and then goes in the venous system to the heart and then the heart pumps that in the arteries to the fat cells where the fat cells primarily take up those chylomicrons because they've got an apoprotein that docks to fat cells and the fat cells store and hold on to the fat that goes from chylomicrons. The empty chylomicrons undock and go back to the liver where they are reprocessed, broken down and reprocessed and excreted as bile. Okay, so interfering with bile is not a good idea. And using ox bile and that kind of thing, not a good idea. Using lipid blockers that block bile like estamibi um, as a statin type molecule, as a cholesterol lowering molecule, not a good idea because it interferes with bile. The other things that are getting absorbed in your chylomicrons, your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, also being absorbed that way. Uh, your essential fatty acids, your three omega fatty acids, some six omega fatty acids, which are also essential, being absorbed that way and being stored in your fat cells. So measuring them in your bloodstream isn't really a value. All these people that love to measure DHA levels in the bloodstream, you're really underestimating that, that that's stored in your fat cells and that that's coming through your diet. So don't waste your money and your time on doing that, okay? The um, next thing that happens is sugar or protein goes to your liver, and excess sugar and excess protein is converted by the liver, excess protein to sugar. And then the liver has a very robust, under the influence of, uh, of insulin during the storage phase, a very robust mechanism for producing lipid moieties. 
So the liver at first stores the sugar as glycogen, but any overflow gets turned by the liver into what we call de novo lipogenesis, the production of fat from sugar. And triglycerides get produced by the liver when it converts sugar to fat under the influence of insulin. A little bit of glucagon. Um, also, high levels of insulin, high levels of thyroid hormone produce cholesterol. They produce cholesterol. And then cholesterol is also being absorbed from the gut. The other day, I was hanging out with a colleague of mine, Dom D'Agostino. A lot of you know him. He's a researcher here in Florida, specifically in the keto space. Uh, we had a conference and we were chatting about a few things. And he's very big into exogenous ketones for a variety of different problems, cancer, getting into ketosis, as am I. So I'm a big supporter of the use of exogenous ketones from time to time to push you over a slight edge. But sometimes the ketone IQ that we use gives you a blip but it doesn't keep you there. However, this is an excellent product. But here's the pearl from Dom. Dom said, take your ketone IQ and take it with some MCT oil. Take it with some short chain or medium chain fatty acids. Ketones are ultra short chain fatty acids. Uh, the MCT oil is medium chain. They all go to your liver. And it just made all the sense in the world. So what I tend to do, because the ketone IQ tastes kind of badly, is I'll swallow a shot of this and then I'll hit my coffee and if I put some MCT oil in my coffee I get double the bump and the MCT oil is there for a longer period of time keeping me in a ketogenic fat burning mode which is excellent for autophagy, cellular repair um, and also suppressing appetite. So a little pearl again stolen from Dom shared on this space. So on an, on an uh, carnivore diet as your insulin levels drop your HMG-CoA reductase pathway gets minimized. You start producing ketones even while you're eating. So that's a glucagon phenomenon. And with that low level of insulin, you're absorbing more cholesterol from the fat that you're eating. But that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Okay. So remember that under high insulin, your, your body's producing a lot of cholesterol in the liver. As insulin levels fall, as, glycogen, as glucagon goes up, Glucagon triages the pathway away from insulin production toward ketone production. So you may be in ketosis even while you're eating, low-level ketosis, because of that glucagon phenomenon. Glucagon also turning protein into fat. So your triglycerides go up a little bit. But the majority of that cholesterol is being absorbed from the gut, going in those chylomicrons to your fat cells. So your cholesterol levels are going to go up because of absorption or production, either one. But the human body depends on adequate cholesterol. Adequate cholesterol is crucial, so it's either by production with some absorption or higher absorption, lower production, but as a whole, you are producing a, a lot of cholesterol, and that's a good thing. It doesn't, it does not cause cardiovascular risk. It'll add to cardiovascular risk if there's an injury trying to heal it, but it doesn't cause it, okay? And in fact, it diminishes cardiovascular inflammation. So it's a good thing that your cholesterols go up. Now, in the liver, during the storage phase, the liver produces VLDL. VLDL is the initial starting lipoprotein that gets produced by the liver to transport triglycerides, phospholipids, cholesterol, and some fat-soluble vitamins from the liver to the fat cells. So during storage phase, you're sending big, fat, fluffy VLDL molecules out. And that can be measured in your blood work. So you want big, fat, fluffy VLDL molecules during the storage phase, okay? The other thing that's also going to add to your triglyceride count is your consumption of MCT oil and medium and short-train triglycerides that do go to the liver and then get stored as triglycerides. They get shipped out to the fat cells and VLDL docks with those fat cells where it gets produced. Uh, sorry, where it gets stored. And it stores not just triglycerides, but all the forms of fat fat-soluble vitamins, uh, cholesterol, and phospholipids, okay? That's during the storage phase. When you've stored the food you've eaten, now you're in utilization phase, and under the influence of glucagon with low levels of insulin, glucagon, insulin stops your fat cells from releasing fat because it's taking it up. Glucagon results in the release of fat. And the first source of fat, the dominant source of fat, is called non-esterified fatty acids that float conjugated to proteins in the bloodstream 
and they go to the cells as a source of energy. For example, the heart, around 80, 75 to 80 percent of the energy that the heart uses, whether you are sugar dominant or fat dominant, is non-esterified fatty acids. So the highest amount of fat that we use is non-esterified fatty acids as a source of energy, irrespective of that tiny fraction that is more sugar or ketones. That's just 15, 20 percent of the energy that we use. Okay, so what then happens is during the utilization phase, the liver is still making VLDL, but now the VLDL is tiny because it's not transporting energy from the liver to the fat cells. The traffic is reversed, and that reversal of traffic is the thing that most commonly leads to better metabolic health. So during storage phase, liver to fat cells, for the rest of the day, the longer period of the day, ideally, fat cells back to liver, and the molecule that then gets released, VLDL picks up fat, picks up phospholipids, picks up triglycerides, picks up cholesterol, picks up three omega fatty acids from the fat cells, shoves them into that tiny little VLDL molecule, and when it undocks, it goes through a transformation, but ultimately ends up as LDL, the bad cholesterol. But in fact, this LDL is not bad, it's healthy because it's big and fluffy. And if you do do NMR, you can look at indirectly, because they don't look at it directly, because they don't want you to know, but you can calculate your large, big, fat, fluffy VLDL. How do you calculate it? The NMR will report your particle number, so it'll report the number of LDL molecules. Let's say it's 3,000. It'll report the small, dense LDL. Let's say that's 100. It'll report the medium LDL numbers. Let's say that's 400. So now you've got 500, but you've got 3,000 as your particle number. Okay. So if you subtract the small plus the medium from the particle number, what's left is your large, fluffy LDL, which is really what you want. And for most people on a carnivore diet, the LDL particle number is going to be very high, but the relative fraction of the small, dense, and the uh, medium chain, uh, the medium size are going to be much smaller, and the overwhelming fraction is the one they don't report, which is your fluffy LDL. That's how you know. And ideally, your NMR should be done in a fasted state when you are fat adapted. Okay, if it's done in the fed state, obviously you're going to see a higher proportion of small dense ones because your VLDL is going to be big and fluffy. So when we look at VLDL, you want to see a, a moderate to high VLDL particle number but a small dense VLDL and a large HDL. HDL being produced by the liver when the liver is using fat as its primary fuel source. Okay, Complex, but that's the way I read NMR. And most doctors have no comprehension of this. All they're looking at are numbers to throw statins at. And of course, your B100 is going to go up because B100 is in LDL molecules. So if your B100 is up, that's okay as long as your, your LDL is big and fluffy. But there's B100 in LDL and there's B100 in VLDL. Not a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on the size of those molecules. Oh, your B100 is high. You're going to die of a heart attack. BS. Absolutely not true. Okay? So understand how to read this. Then those big fluffy VLDL molecules go to your tissues to dump fat. They go to your liver where the liver releases that fat and turns them into ketones under the influence of glucagon. So that is the ideal metric. Now, like anything, you can overdo things. So if you're eating a massive amount of high fat, when you are insulin suppressed or insulin sensitive, and you're eating a massive amount of fat, that's what we talk about early on, high fat animal products, fine. Later on, you want to eat the leaner amount, still with fat, but the protein fat ratio may, must alter because you're, in, you're insulin suppressed. And we could talk about that. We'll talk about that in the next segment. Um, if you overeat, pro uh, overeat fat and cholesterol, you overwhelm the system. And then, yes, the body will have very high levels of total cholesterol, very high levels of exogenous deposition of cholesterol. You may start getting xanthelasma, those little eye deposits uh, under your eyes, in your eyes. You may get certain tophi. You may get uh, um, fat, uh, uh, fat and cholesterol deposition in your tissues, often felt like little nodules. Or uh, you may get something called arcus, which is, the, which is cholesterol deposition in your eyes. 
That does occur, but it occurs in people who are fat adapted, insulin suppressed, and eating massive amounts of cholesterol because more is better. So again, there's a bell curve for everything. And if you have xanthelasma, if you have those extraneous cholesterol deposition, it may be that genetically you absorb a lot of cholesterol, or it may just be that you're overeating it. The first step is to come to someone like myself or someone that understands this and find a way to modify the amount of cholesterol in your diet, decrease that slightly because you can overdo it even though it's healthy for most people, or the only indication, the only indication of a cholesterol lowering fat blocking, med blocking medication like is to maybe is for those people. But then you've got to be aware of your fat soluble vitamins and other sources of fat. So while cholesterol lowering is not a value for um, the lipid numbers, we want you to modify your lipid numbers so that you're in a pattern. There are times when you're overdoing things that modification may be better, but it's always better to understand that the problem is the diet and to modify the diet. So that is a discussion of lipid trafficking, and it is so important to have expectations of what your lipids are going to do and not be afraid of a rising cholesterol or a rising LDL as long as you have an A pattern. Big fluffy LDL, small dense VLDL, except when you're eating, where you see the reverse. I am the carb addiction doc. Understand this, work with a provider that understands this so that fear is not there that you're going to get a heart attack or a stroke because of your lipid levels.